weekend. Good. Echo. Next song. A little intro music to start the day. Happy Monday. Good. Did we have a good good weekend? Great weekend. Oh, so that's awesome. I wish mine was great, but I went on a nice hike yesterday, nice trail walk, a nice fall day. That's nice. Thank you, Eddie, man. Any, anything interesting this weekend? Anything fun? Oh, echo, lower music. Sorry about that. Not really. I did see a movie uh, this weekend, so the new James Bond movie. I really like that series. It was pretty good. I won't no no spoilers. But it, it was pretty good if you like James Bond. Anyone else anything new or exciting this weekend? Or maybe not that exciting. <laughs> hey Catherine, good. Dominic, welcome. Kyle, good. Thank you, Alyssa. Ryan, I want to see Venom, Ryan. Oh, my goodness. I want to see Venom. Yeah, I'm a big Marvel superheroes. It's really funny. I watched Age of Ultron while I was doing some work this weekend. Echo, turn off music. A little pro tip if you're ever presenting or lecturing or public speaking. Sometimes I sing along to my favorite songs to uh, get the voice going and uh, get the vocal cords warmed up, right? I think in a past life, I wanted to be a performer, a rock star. Uh, Ashlyn, gotcha, thank you. Yeah, I'll take attendance about midway through. So uh, I threw the quote of the week up there, and please add to the chat, add your conversation, uh, add to the conversation there. Yeah, I was talking to someone about the new Halloween movie too, Eddie. Um, I've seen a lot of them, which they kind of creep me out still. But the fact that um, they made a franchise out of like basically one movie, I think for the past 30 years, right? I know I'm, I'm up there in age, so I've been seeing them as a kid, the Halloween movies. Um, they do kind of creep me out still, but around Halloween, I will kind of get into the horror uh, spirit. Um, oh, Trevor saw it. Trevor, without any spoilers, did, did you like it? It looks a little bit more, um, I saw the last one, which is kind of a cool throwback, the last Halloween movie. But this one looks a little bit more uh, uh, campy. I don't know if you guys know the word campy. What do I mean by campy? But um. I won't get too much into it, but I thought the new James Bond movie was pretty good. Oh, Catherine wants to see it too. I'll probably see it right around Halloween, just for the heck of it. Oh, all right. Trevor gave it an okay. It's like a half thumbs up review. Thank you. I used to work in um, one of my favorite jobs. I used to manage a video store. The county was, we even have video stores anymore. There's one blockbuster left in the whole, in the world. But if you don't know what Blockbuster is, the video rental. So I used to manage my um, manage a video store. I'm working my way through college for for multiple years, and um, yeah, back then it was it was we got it was DVDs and Blu-rays just started, but we still had videotapes on the shelves. If you guys remember VHS tapes, but anyway, not to digress. So movies is a favorite of mine. I, I love movies. So. Um, I used to have a really big collection, uh, not anymore. Um, so, and I'm, I'm happy to be, I actually went back to the theater. So, uh, really empty. Wow. But we went at a good time. We went to an afternoon matinee. It was awesome. Huge theater, beautiful screen, and uh, had a theater to ourselves. So, a nice small group we went with. It was awesome. All right. Let's jump into this. But thank you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for being here. Happy Monday. Welcome back. Uh, i got a few things to go through with you to get set up uh, for next week, basically. 
um, give you a little break over Halloween weekend, but in some other ways, uh, you also get extra work, but I'll go over that with you in a minute. Uh, our quote of the week, it was hard to find a quote that matched what we were talking about in our class, right? Talk about management and skills, but I think really the second half of this quote, I think is the important part. You don't have to convince investors about the merits of your idea. You just have to convince yourself. Which I think is sort of a half truth. If you're looking for people to invest in you, if you're looking for people to back you, especially financially with money, then you need to convince them. Yes, you have to convince them, right? Um, but I get what this is saying, that if we don't believe in ourselves, if we don't invest in ourselves first and convince ourselves that we're making the right choices, the right decisions in business or any parts of our lives, it's just going to make it that much harder for us to get other people to believe in us. Right? Does that make sense? So I think purely from a business standpoint, if you go to a bank with a business plan, you need to convince them that your business plan is worth investing in and giving you money in and loaning you money for, right? So you do need to convince them. But I think half the battle, if I can quote an old GI Joe saying, half the battle is believing in yourself, convincing yourself. I think that's a great part of it. You know, once you do that, then other things will follow, right? If you put the right work and effort into it. So we're going to talk about that today. We're going to talk about, um, which we did on last Wednesday, different types of skills that are needed, different business skills, different management skills. Um, and even if you don't have these skills, or you, if you don't think you have them, maybe, maybe you do, which is a great thing. Even if you don't think you have them, you can still learn them. It, you can still build them into your own personal skill set repertoire. All right. Hopefully that makes sense for you. So let's get into the agenda uh, for today. Um, our main goal is to finish up chapter five. So we do that. We're good to go for Wednesday. We're going to get into chapter six. We're going to do a little midterm review. So our main goal today is to get back into chapter five, finish up chapter five, which I think we'll, we'll do today. Um, and a reminder of that as well, if you haven't started it yet, I know some of you have, but your chapter five assignment is due Friday, October 22nd. So your chapter five assignment is due this Friday, October 22nd. If you remember, I extended that date because we were still working on chapter five. I was trying to be proactive. It's due on um, this Friday, October 22nd. All right, due before 11.59 p.m. One note about past assignments. I caught up with almost most of your assignments should be graded and completed. I had a few assignments. I couldn't put your final grade in for the assignment. Um, so I didn't get a chance to input your grades for some of your assignments, even though I reviewed them. I had a little technical issue. I thought I was going to get back to my office this morning and finish them. I didn't get there. I apologize. So a few of your assignments haven't been graded yet. I apologize for that. Um, they'll be done within 24 hours, if not 48 hours, as soon as I get back to my office and put your final grade. So just letting you know, don't think I didn't. I appreciate you getting your work in on time and being there. I usually try to get it done, get it graded before the next assignment. Um, I didn't have a chance with a few of yours. I apologize. I will get that, get that done. So um, next week, a few things going on. We have only one conference next week. It's only uh, Monday. So I give you a break next week on the conferences. But so we meet on Monday, no conference next Wednesday. You have an additional assignment next week. You have a discussion. It's broken up into five sections discussion question you need to answer next week. It's sort of a makeup for that missed conference. And our midterm exam opens next week as well. All right, so you have a new assignment, you have a discussion question you need to answer, and that's like, a, that's like a group assignment, but you answer it on your own. 
and then midweek your midterm exam opens up. <laughs> Apologize that puppy needs to get involved in the in the class. So your midterm exam opens up. It's mainly on chapters one through five. There's a few concepts and definitions from chapter six, which we'll get into on Wednesday. But it's mainly on chapters one through five. If you go back into the last module, there's a, a midterm review. And that midterm review just basically gives you the main concepts and definitions from one through six to focus on and to study for the for the exam. Now, I don't know if some of you have experienced this yet, but the exam is not honor lock. There's no honor lock if you're not sure what honor lock is, but I'm writing this in chat. I don't know if it's one word or two, but what's the difference? Our exam does not use honor lock. So if you're not sure what honor lock is, really quick, you might get this in other classes for the SECC. Honor lock is a system that actually uses your video cameras on your PCs. And it, for lack of better words, it watches you while you take the exam to make sure there's no one else there helping you with the answers, to make sure you're not using un, um, textbooks or other resources that you shouldn't be using to answer questions, and that you're not going in and out during the exam as well. So that's honor lock. We don't we don't use honor lock here, but your exams are set up so you do have a time limit. And I'm not sure if I'm going to give you a second chance on the exam or not. Just being honest, but if I do, if you come back and take the exam again, the answers will be shuffled. And I, I don't know if I should be giving you this much information, but your questions will be different and the answers will be different as well. So. That's sort of my way to, you know, challenge you and it's, it's not to not to have you not do well. But the, the, the importance of the exams are A, to challenge you with the work and to also assess how much you know about the material and how much you understood, right, to help you move forward. That's the main goal. Like, we want you to do well. I want you to succeed. I want you to move on. But hopefully, everything we're doing here is is getting you to understand the material, is getting you to learn. And then the exams, quizzes, assess that that learning for you. And that's why sometimes I give this second chance, and I know other professors do as well, other instructors do. We give that second chance because we're hoping you retain the material that you learned from the first exam or you maybe there's some things that you didn't understand as well. So there was a management skill you forgot or there was a factors of production, you missed one of them. You know what? You go back, you, you relearn it, you take the time to understand it, you come back and reapply it on the second time around, right? That's That's part of the process of learning. I think that's a good thing. And if you want to take the time to to take it a second time, if you want to take the time to learn and do better, you know, I'm all for it. I'm a big proponent of it. So uh, multiple choice, Alyssa, great question too. Exam is multiple choice. Yep. Any questions on that before I move on to the next topic? It does open midweek and leave it open for a few days. And we don't have a conference next Wednesday. But in place of the conference, I, I'm just being honest, I do I double your workload. And then you also have the midterm exam to take. As well, so if you want to take take the time instead of being, you know, at our conference to do the exam, it's kind of why I put it out there. But if not, you know, use it for something else. Any other questions? All right. I'm getting ready for Halloween. I've got my my boo from Starbucks, my boo mug. 
you guys see that okay it's kind of funny it's one eyed it's called the one eyed monster i think um i do break out the the decorative seasonal um i almost called it gear but uh decor yes all right so thank you for being here if you haven't signed up yet we do have our next business club meeting this thursday at 3 30 p.m it's online it's virtual if you haven't signed up and you'd like to sign up still there's no obligation there's no cost you can just email this email address And they're in chat. If you'd like to join send an email from your Sussex Outlook email. So that's the email that ends in at student.sussex.edu. I put it down there in chat. So whatever your first name is, initial, there may be a number there as well, at student.sussex.edu. Email the business club at sussex.edu and just say, hey, I'd like to join the business club. It's that easy. And there's no commitments, no obligations, anything, but we just keep you updated on upcoming meetings, events, fundraisers we're doing. This Thursday, we're going to be nominating or we're going to be voting on. We have different positions we need to fill for the club. So we have a we're looking for a president. We're looking for a vice president, secretary, treasurer and a marketing person. So we have five positions to fill. So if you'd like to run for anything, you want to build up your resume, you want to build up your, your college resume, there's a great chance to do it. Um, I know I used it way back when. I was part of the business club at Susquehanna Community College uh, over a decade ago. But our next meeting, it's online. It's 3.30. It lasts about 30 to 45 minutes. Please join us. Um, you know, we had fun at our last meeting. And if you didn't get a chance to um, come by. We're doing it on Thursday now, or Thursday afternoon. Um, so, and it's virtual. So we'll send you a link before the meeting starts. You just click on the link to join the meeting. Uh, it's that simple. All right. Good stuff there. Any questions, any of that? Any questions about the business club? I'm drinking a maple brown sugar flavored coffee today. I think it's from Starbucks. Um, the ground coffee beans. Yes, very interesting. There was fall leaves on the bag, so I, I bought it. I didn't even know the flavor. <laughs> I was trying to get into the season. Oh, thank you, Eddie. Yeah, it's, it's actually, it's, it's pretty good. It's not bad. I think I threw off the, I threw off the maple flavor by adding um, uh, cocoa um, creamer into it. Don't don't mind me. Yeah. All right. Let's get back into this, shall we? So we left last week. We're talking about managers. We talked about different types of strategies and skills. Let me fast forward, figure out where we left off. So just a quick little update here, or I should say um, call out about your exam. So your exam might ask about different types of managers top managers middle managers first line managers and then ask you for um it's multiple choice so it'll say it'll give you a group of 
employees and say what type of category do they fit into. Just giving you a little, little pro tip on the exam. And you just pick out top manager, middle manager, first line manager. Um, there might be a one a, a type of manager to throw you off in there as well. Uh, I like to do those occasionally. Um, we talked about that um, human resource management. I believe we talked about this already, right? I'm trying to bring back data information managers. I want to get into planning. Um, do, do, do. We talked about technical skills. Let me do a little quick little review for you. I'll grab a tissue. Um, technical skills, skills needed to perform specialized tasks. We got a little bit detailed on technical skills. I believe we did. What were some examples of technical skills that we talked about? Do you remember? I know it was from last week. Any examples of technical skills that we talked about? I think I I'm trying to visualize it in my head now. I think I gave you two or three examples of actual technical skills. Dominic, did I use paperwork or was paper was paperwork one of the um it was on that was on the the, the time wasting list. Um what do we call that? Hang on, I'll show you that in a second as I'm yeah, Alyssa, nice job. Programming. Yeah. Programming. Sure. Um, I mean, paperwork could be, I should not put it down or anything. Paperwork could be a technical skill. Oh, no, Dominic, it's not a, not, a, not a problem. I think, yeah, paperwork was up there. The number one reason um, that employees waste time at work, right? But the leading causes of wasted time at work that was talking about the workspace or office space. Um, if you remember what was on that list too, um, email and telephone calls, right? Um, yeah, so technical skills. We talked about uh, programming, uh, data management, um, IT, information technology, technical skills, right? Uh, as as well, but it's important that we don't look past human resource skills or human relation skills. Skills and understanding and getting along with people. Effective managers need human relation skills just as much as effective leaders do, right? And sometimes we call these soft skills. I'm not too big on this term, but I think we talked a little bit about this last week. Soft skills. So our ability to get along with other employees, our abilities to communicate with customers, to communicate with other team members, other employees ab above us and below us as well. These, these soft skills, and to understand people, to be empathetic. I think it's part of this human relation skills. And they're important in any type of work that we'll do, any type of management. So if you're a sole proprietor, if you're the owner of your own business, or maybe you're a manager in a large company, in a large corporation, you're gonna need those human relation skills. And conceptual skills, what did we talk about with conceptual skills? Do you remember that? What did we talk about with conceptual skills? Any thoughts on that? Sorry, I'm gonna grab it. So, in conceptual skills, a little bit later on, we're going to get into SWOT analysis, SWOT analysis. We talk about conceptual skills. 
Oh, I was going to go ahead, Dominic. I'll let you add into that. Yeah, critical thinking. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. Sure, critical thinking. Thank you, Alyssa. Yeah, I was seeing if. Um... So, and that's what we, we if we expand on that conceptual skills. We understand that there's threats, right? The competition. We we look for new opportunities, and we want these as as managers, as business leaders. We want to be able to recognize new opportunities, and that's part of entrepreneurship as well. Is is taking risks to move into new areas. You know, are we able to analyze? what's available to us to act on it. That's part of conceptual skills. All right, let's move forward a bit here. Um, oh, we're not moving forward there. Decision-making skills, time management skills. We talked about this, right? This led to leading causes of wasted time. I was about to ask you about this. I think we went through this, right? I think it's a little bit outdated because I would move email up the list. I would probably swap email with telephone calls. I think before the prevalent use of the internet and technology, our main form of communication inside the office or whatever our workspace was, was the phone call, was the telephone. And as technology grew and the internet grew, email has become the main source of communication for a lot of people, maybe not for all people, for a lot of people. I almost wish we could do an analysis of how much time during the day that the typical worker uses for phone conversations from like 20 years ago to now, and in the same way with email. Oh, we can look at that from different generations or different time periods, but it would be interesting. All right, so that's, we talked about that already, I believe leading causes of wasted of time. Uh, global management skills. I wanna get into the planning. Oh, let's, let's make us hungry again. Yes, we left off, um, we watched the Hamburg University video last week, right, as, as a group. Um, together. We saw this last week, right? Um, I might as well leave the, the burger and fries up there to make us a little bit hungry, right? I just had a little midday snack and I'm getting hungry already. Uh, all right, we won't, I won't leave this up on the screen too much longer. You're making me want some fries now. I think I know what my dinner's going to be tonight. Um, but it was an interesting video. I like that video. It's short. It's like less than five minutes. But it shows you the different skills that are needed. You know, even, even I don't want to put down McDonald's, but in that type of franchise, in that type of environment, all the different types of skill sets you'll need to manage in a place, even like McDonald's, right? All the, the different skills you're gonna need from, from management to your technical skills, to time management, to prior, prioritization, to your customer skills, right? That all comes together in that type of, in type of environment. I like it as a little insight into, into franchising and what you get when you franchise as well. So here's the critical part of um, a manager's job is planning. It's planning. And part of that planning is strategic management. So in our definition here, we have process of helping an organization maintain an effective alignment with its environment. What 
What does this line mean? I don't know if we talked about this. Let me get a little yellow there. What is this line? What does this mean to you? I think it's an interesting way to define a concept and effective alignment with this environment. Do you have another way of, of saying that? I'll give you, give you a chance to think about it. Strategic management is the process of helping an organization maintain an effective alignment with its environment. What does that mean? How does a business maintain an effective alignment with its environment? What do we think about what, what's in the environment? And if you can, even a few words, or if you have a, another way to put that law that give us redefine that line for us, please, please do in the chat there. What does that mean to you? Dominic, good, yes, good stuff. Anyone else? And Dominic, I'm going to expand on that, and you are correct. Helping the organization maintain an effective alignment with its environment. So Dominic or, or others, too. Customers is a big part of that. Yeah. What else is in that environment besides customers? Great point. What else is in, inside that environment besides customers? What else are we dealing with? All right, employees. But hey, for one second, when we think of uh, Connor, you just went there. Thank you. I was going to say, when we think of environment, there's an internal environment and external environment. So you're right. Our employees would be, uh, Dominic, on the internal environment. Yeah. Customers on the external environment, right? There you go, Connor. Competition. Sure. How do we see our competition? How do we compete with other businesses? And when we think about growth in that environment, what's available to us? What opportunities are there? What new markets? You know, we talked a little bit about global management skills, global management skills. Well, why are global management skills important? Well, they're important if we want to develop outside of our current location, basically international development, international expansion, online expansion, right? Goes beyond our internal environment. All right, thank you both. Good stuff there. So strategy, a broad set of organizational plans for implementing the decisions made for achieving organizational goals. So it's important for managers to decide which actions are the most important to achieve their goals. Right? Planning and strategy is so important as a manager, as a leader. because we need to figure out where we're going and how to get there. That's why this next section is important as well. No matter the type of business you're in, it's important that we set goals. And here we have it, set business goals. The means by which organizations and their managers measure success or failure at every level. Objective that a business hopes and plans to achieve. Because without those goals, how do we assess our performance? Right, just like our midterm exam. As a business, if you don't have specific goals, 
how do you assess what your needs are? How do you assess where you need to be? Um, one term in your book, they call these, and motivation is a great term uh, as well. And yes. Performance targets. So I found this interesting quote down there thinking of a, a target, right? And those darts in that dartboard there, which says, if you aim at nothing, you will hit it every time. If you aim at nothing, you will hit it every time. So if you don't have any goals, how can you figure out what your next step is going to be? How can you figure out if you're on the right track, if you've if you made growth or not. And yet, it, even uh, to use exactly, even to use as motivational tools for yourself to move forward. You know, it's a way to measure success and to me or to measure failure. I don't like that term too much, but I understand the importance of it. So let me just run. You don't have to note all these down. I don't believe we use these on the exam. I shouldn't give you that. But the next slide, you don't have to note all these down. But the, the purposes of goal setting provides direction and guidance, helps firms allocate resources, helps to define corporate culture, and helps manager assess performance. Reasons why we set goals. A lot of this is also because we don't want to waste our resources and waste our actions, right? Help us be efficient and less potential for error. So one main main goal that most companies have, or you're going to have when you do your business plan, a type of a goal, and this goal varies from company to company. You know, depending on the company's and the company's purpose, you're going to have a different type of mission statement. I'll let you read that real quick while I come right back. So I found this, um, I didn't write this mission statement on here, but I found this mission statement I posted next to this uh, online and I, I didn't find the author of it, unfortunately. Um, I liked it even for myself and I, I actually wanna print this out and put it on my one of my office walls. Um, in a mission statement, maybe for teachers, for professors, maybe, and not for everyone, but I think I would kind of, um, I would use this for my for myself, um, put it that way. So my mission as a teacher is to help my students realize that through learning, they can enhance their life in a positive way. I want to help all my students believe in themselves and through that belief, take on the challenges of life and go forward. I thought that was, I thought that was great. If, if I could write a mission statement for myself, I probably write something similar to that. So I'm going to borrow that and I want to give that author credit. I wish I knew who it was. Um, but that's a mission statement, like I said, for a different um, type of 
employee, right? For for a kind of a a um, um, you know for, for a very specific field. So your mission statement for your company, for your business, for your business plan is going to be adapted for your goals, right? For your purpose. And, you know, just to get an idea of that, if you go on, go online, I was doing that this weekend as well. Look up the mission statement for Starbucks. Look up the mission statement for Google. And you can even maybe take some smaller companies too. And just type in the search engine, you know, whatever your company is you're looking for and mission statement or purpose statement. Sometimes it's also called a purpose statement. Um, and you can look up their vision as well. I think the vision is a great thing. I think a lot of times our mission statement is born from our vision. So our mission statement is born from our vision. So we have a vision. We have a plan for our company, and out of that, we'll build our mission statement. Any questions about that or questions about that for yourself? And hopefully, when you get started on your business plan, this is going to be one of the first things that you, you probably work on. And that's up to you how you want to handle your management of that assignment. But it most likely will be. Your vision, your mission statement will be one of the first things that you, you build for yourself or you work on. So if you have questions about that, please uh, reach out to me and, and you know let me know, and uh, I can help you tweak it or give you advice on it or um, talk to you about it if if you like. So, all right. So that's that's the that's kind of like the place setting for the rest of our goals for our company because your other goals are going to tie in some way to your mission statement. So let's let's break those down. What are the other types of goals you're going to have for your company? Well, these goals talk about timing. So here we have a long-term goal, an intermediate goal, and a short-term goal. And since we add that intermediate goal in there, our long-term goals are typically going to be five years or more. Intermediate goals are going to be approximately between one year and five years. And then your short term is anywhere from zero to one year in time. Now, a lot of businesses and business plans, they won't necessarily have that intermediate goal. And you should or you could have the intermediate goal. But if you don't have the intermediate goal, not to confuse things, but most of the time, that long-term goal will be three years or more. And short-term is anything less than three years. So even two years is still considered short-term. But for our purposes, we will break it down into three categories, right? Your long-term, your intermediate, and your short-term. So a quick example of this, and how do we add timing into our goals. What do we mean by that, to add timing into our goals? Because you want to be specific, but we don't have to be specific enough to add values. Let me give you an example. So I'm thinking of an intermediate goal for our marketing department or our, our advertising. So I might say something like this, and I'll put it down in the chat.
So my puppy playing with the toy. So here's an example of an inter intermediate goal that could apply to almost any business. And just to give you an example, we talk about being specific, but we don't actually list any dollar amounts in here, right? And we don't list an actual number of customers, but if we were to put this goal into a business plan, we would understand what we were trying to accomplish. We would understand we want to achieve. If you saw that flying squirrel. So within two years, we want to double our marketing budget to achieve a 200% growth in sales. So basically we want to double our sales, which 200% means. And we also want to triple our customer base. So we're not exactly saying, well, we have a million dollar marketing budget. And we want to invest 2 million in marketing. That 2 million should at least double our sales. And we're hoping to triple our customers from 1,000 a month to 3,000 a month. Now, if you want to get that specific, you can. But we can, we can set that target without actually listing numbers. You see that even though we did say the amount of time, the amount of growth, and what our expectancy is. But is, does that make sense about setting goals? But if you want to put actual numbers when you do your business plan, please feel free. All right. So in your business plan, I do say for each set of goals, be specific. And that's, that's what I mean. So you want a sales increase. Well, how much do you want that sales to increase by? You want to cut costs. What percentage or dollar amount do you want to cut costs by? Maybe one of your goals is to reduce turnover. So reduce the amount of employees that leave your company and increase the amount that you're bringing in and that stay on board with you. That could be another number as well. All right. So after we set our goals, we want to think about the strategies that are going to we're going to use to accomplish um, those goals. Oh, well, we've been going for 50 minutes already. Um, or maybe before, so we're, in the, we're on the final quarter of this chapter. You want to take a five minute break? Is that a good time now? Yeah, it looks like we're about 50 minutes in. You want to take a, let's take a five minute break. Is that good? Come back here at 2.39. We'll finish up 15 minutes left in the, in the, in the chapter. We'll, we'll get through a lot more in chapter five. We'll talk about strategies. Talk about planning. Why don't we? Why don't we give our give our minds and our voices a, a break? Um, down there in chat. Let's take a. Oop, be good if I could spell take. I appreciate you all being here. So while you're while you're taking a break, I will take attendance. So let's make it nice and easy. Meet back here at two forty, right? Thank you. So I'm going to go dark for a minute, meaning I'm turning off my, my mic and my screen, but I'm going to take attendance while you guys are still here. We did lose a couple of people. Don't lose any more because I'm not going to put you down in attendance. Be right back. See you in five minutes. Five and five, as Chuck Wollery used to say.
All right, welcome back. Hope we got a nice little break there. We'll jump right into this, wrap up the our program with some different types of strategy. So let me read this to you and then we'll expand on it a little bit. Uh, corporate strategy. Hopefully you came back to join us. Strategy for determining the firm's overall attitude toward growth and the way it will manage its business or product lines. So different businesses will have different types of strategy. And Corporate strategy um, could expand into diversification. And what do I mean by diversification, by corporate strategy? Let me put that up there in in the chat. diversification. So, and this is a very um, um, not a large concept. I apologize. I'm trying to think of the, the right term for it. It's a very general overview of a corporate strategy diversification. But if a company has related diversification, Then, you know, let's talk about like the fast food market. And you're a particular brand in the fast food market. Well, related diversification would mean you have similar product types or similar businesses operating. So maybe you have different types of burger establishments. Um, if you're a sub, a subway, franchise, you have similar sandwich makers, your related diversification. But sometimes you have unrelated diversification. It's a corporate strategy, unrelated diversification. And within those restaurant chains, you might own a higher end restaurant. Um, you know, I'm making it up here, but let's say Longhorns, Longhorn Steakhouse or whatever the steakhouse is. You own a steakhouse, you own a fast food burger joint, and maybe you own a pizza restaurant. Um, I think there's a case study in your book that talks about Yum Brands. Yum Brands, right? Yum, yum Brands, they own um, different restaurant chains. So Taco Bell. Kentucky Fried Chicken, uh, Pizza Hut, I think is in the Yum brand. I got to look that up. So their corporate strategy is to own these fast food chains, but in different categories, meaning pizza, chicken, burgers, right? So in one way, they have a related strategy but when it comes to the actual food, it's unrelated, if that makes sense. So in a business or competitive strategy, focuses on improving a firm's competitive position. And in this context, in this business or competitive strategy context, and we talk about the product line. So I'm thinking of uh, Pepsi, the Pepsi brand, right? And it, Pepsi, I believe, owns um, 
what's the uh the and not the energy drink oh my goodness now i'm drawing a blank um gatorade right pepsi owns gatorade is that what someone was going was that is that right was that like correct there so meaning in this competitive strategy pepsi in this pepsi soda we know that they're going to compete with coke but from a product line they might want to advertise and market Gatorade to compete with other competitors in that product line as well. That's their business or competitive strategy where they're competing on an individual product basis. All right, and a lot of companies, and you'll see the larger companies, the Pepsi, the Cokes, um, the young brands, the French food, the fast food franchises, they'll compete on this business or competitive strategy. Now, some companies will compete on a functional strategy. Strategy by which managers in specific areas decide how best to achieve corporate goals through productivity. I'm sorry, if you have questions or you want to add to it, please put it up there in chat, of course. When we talk functions in a company, when you talk a functional strategy, you're talking about different functions. So what types of functions do you think we're, we're alluding to here? What types of functions are we talking about within a company? And what functional areas do we have different types of managers in? Maybe it's a different way to look at it. Any ideas here? in chat oh dominic's already got some yes oh me so add to that please what types of functions areas may we strategize for dominic i think warehouse is a great one you know we think about um supply chain management could be a function right isn't that where the warehouse manager comes in i think it's a great point hotel managers yeah so let me Hotel managers, if we had to be a little bit more specific, what function area would a hotel manager, the same with the warehouse manager, what function of a business, just in general, would they oversee or would they strategize for? Any ideas there? In a very general term. So I'll, I'll give you an example for myself, right? I was a marketing manager. So my strategy would be for the marketing area, for the marketing department. The hotel manager may, might oversee different functions, to be honest. The warehouse manager is a little bit more specific. And these are really good examples. I'm about to give you the, I'll give you the first letter of the function, but Catherine, please go ahead, throw it up there if you have an idea. I'm thinking a little bit more specific, but in, in general, if that makes sense. Well, I was thinking of that. I was thinking of customer service. Yes, I was thinking of customers for one of the functions of the hotel managers, but they could also, a uh, hotel manager could be in charge of this with an, with a warehouse manager. I'm gonna give you the first letter. Probably get it on the first letter, won't you? Hold on. I'm making, I'm doing the hangman game in the chat. It doesn't work as well here. And I got to spell it out. How many letters this thing has? All right, I, I just made it up. And there. If we were in class, I could do this on the board, on the board, and play have a little fun with you guys with the hangman game. The, this function area starts with an O. This is what we're talking about: functional areas. Uh, not organization, operations. Alyssa, nice job. Bonus points for today for Alyssa. 
But Catherine, you and Dominic get points too for joining in. So thank you. Operations, yes. We didn't even get a chance to play the hangman game because Alyssa guessed it. But Alyssa, the class wins, the, the professor loses. Nice job. Operations is a function area. So we, the warehouse manager, the hotel manager, operations, right? The, the factory manager, the floor manager, operations. Yeah. Finance is another functional strategy. So operations is a functional strategy. Marketing is a fun functional strategy. Accounting is a functional strategy. Finance is a functional strategy. So those managers in those areas will set goals that align with their functions. All right, how are we doing? All right, just a couple of minutes here. So I'm not gonna spend too much time on this. Um, You know, this diagram is, is in your book, but really it's talking about um, your overall corporate strategy is then broken down into a business or competitive strategy, which then can be put into a functional strategy. All right, so you have this overall corporate strategy that you can define in a business or, or a competitive strategy. But then if you drill down further, you can put it into a functional strategy. That's all that's trying to show. Like I said, I don't want to get too much. I just want to wrap this up. Um, because this is part of your business plan, this section coming up. It's going to start getting into SWOT analysis. Let's get into a little bit of this today. Um, we'll come back on Wednesday and we'll, we'll pick up on this area. But Steps to formulate a strategy. And this can be a challenge for a lot of businesses. So we want to define our strategic goals. We want to set our strategic goals is your first step. Your second step is the SWOT analysis. And we'll get into SWOT analysis in just a minute here before we wrap up. And step three is figuring out the type of environment that your business is in. That's step three, matching the organization and its environment. So yeah, I want to keep it today. You guys, you've been a really good group and I know I've been pressing my time with you. Um, let me just fast forward to SWOT analysis. We'll come back on Wednesday and we'll go through this. All right, we'll talk about each of these uh, areas and the SWOT analysis and how, why this is important in formulating your strategy. Um, we'll wrap up chapter five on Wednesday. We'll get into chapter six and we'll do some midterm exam review on Wednesday as well. I'll have a little fun with that. So why don't we say goodbye for today? Thank you for being here. Thank you for your participation. Thank you for being a good group. Uh, thank you for the others that are supporting us as well here with us, too. Uh, we appreciate it. Have a great rest of your Monday. Enjoy this um, weather, whatever it may be, cool and breezy outside, fall weather. Enjoy it, everyone. Thank you. Have a good day. Uh, my puppy's saying goodbye to you, too, but I'll put her on camera on Wednesday. All right. Hey, thank you, everyone. Thank you for being here, you too. Alexis, Nicholas, Quavel, Ed, Eddie, thank you, Logan, Elliot. It. Yeah, thank you, Catherine. Thank you for Dominic participating. Appreciate it much. Alyssa, nice job. Have a great rest of your day. Jonathan, thank you. You too. Take care, everyone.